push up over that. Yo, dude. Yeah, I will. Okay, now what do I have? I'm going to skip number four for a minute. We talk about number five, request to approve lighting plan for 54 East Hampton Road. Do we have a lighting plan? You should have a lighting plan. I don't think we call. This should be one. Wayne has the. I have a lighting plan. I don't really even know if I got a plan. Just assume we had a plan. I don't think they gave us. We didn't get it. Because this was like a, it wasn't a permanent application. It was something that we conditioned them to do something. Yeah, we are all right. So this is a lighting plan with a revision date of 529. I don't know what the last one was. I think that's our, not good. Our mission was to come up with a maximum amount of foot candles that we would allow under the canopy. Yep. For those of me who wasn't at your little light here yeah. tonight, can you, I know you gave a few numbers out there. Yeah. So what we did, everybody else was there. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, we, we started at the Stop and Shop parking lot and the reading car, and I forgot my notes, of course. The, and uh, the, the assist, assistant building inspector was there with us who knew the lighting tool. Um, and underneath uh, the lights in the parking lot, it was um, about six. Um, the parking lot in general was very good. It was about, I want to say, 3.5 when you moved away from there. We went just across the driveway to the Stop and Shop gas station, and the lighting was different. There was a couple of new lamps in the lights that was bright, and then some of the canopy had older lights, so it was darker. Um, one area that we looked at was, with the darker bulbs, was eight, I think, um, which we all agreed was okay. It didn't present any kind of safety hazard for us. When we went over to the brighter lights, it went up to 12 and 12 and a half. And when we set it on the ground, it was like 12 foot candles. When we brought it up to the pump level or hip level, it went up to like 16, the closer you got to the light source. We went across the street to the Hess station and the lighting there was, we all thought pretty good. And that was between six and eight foot candles. Under the canopy. Under the canopy, mm -hmm. yep. Depending where you were in the canopy, in some parts of the canopy would have two rows of lights and it would go up to eight. At the edge of the canopy, it would be about six, but still plenty of light. Plenty of light, yeah. yeah. Also, plenty of light. They had a contention that when somebody walked from the gas station pumps to the store, it would be too dark, but we found that there was plenty of light, even at, you know, six and five foot candles. Um, and three and a half. Yeah, even three and a half. And then we went down to our friend down the corner of Damon Road. And the foot candles there were up to 26. Yeah. Um, but of course, that was built before the zoning regulations. We all thought that that was too bright. And right, right at the corner of Cole Morgan, you know, the property line, they were at like, you know, 21 or something. So it was very bright. Um, we didn't make a decision then when we were standing around, but I would posit that, you know, we would recommend. What do they have there, Frandy, for under the canopy? 12, 12 13. Which was the stop and shop. And our, the brighter part of stop and shop. Right. And our ordinance says, though, unfortunately, regardless of where you are, any industrial setting, any commercial setting, it can be no more than five, right? A hot spot. So we're providing, we're giving them leeway by going anywhere above five. We're giving them actually a variance to the ordinance, a waiver. So I, I guess you probably maybe discussed this or whatever, but to me the big question was, was five inadequate? And it seems like it's not that inadequate because you guys thought six was acceptable at gas pump. It, it seemed like five at the ground was 12 at your hip or at task level. And 10, you know, it was six, seven, eight more than what it was at the ground. So 10 to, what are they asking for, 15 or 12? Well, well that's a they that's, say that's a level. Yeah, so if that's, a, if well, that's, that's at the ground, then you're talking maybe 18, 19 at, yeah. at pump level. That's the question we didn't right. know. We're Five didn't there. seem to be any safety well, issue. We don't all. even know for sure whether these are measured at the ground level. Right. And if they are, then it's, it's just more than bright enough. Right. But then we lose 
thought that the level at the, at the, where you're actually doing the work is important. Right. So that's what you find out what those are. Something like that. But I can only assume that this is ground level stuff. Right. It's a projection on the ground. We get a lot of those at the office, and that's always been my assumption that those are at the ground. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think these are really high. Still. I mean, we found, I think, that five was adequate, but probably low, but adequate. Ten-ish was fine, but if these are 12 plus six to eight, 18, 20, that was too bad. That unnecessarily bad. <coughs> do we want to give them, I mean, do we want to say 10? Do we want, what, can we, if we, we have to pick a number. Well, I think we want to get as close to our standards. So is 10 too much? And no. I was like, 8? I don't think we'd go as high as 10. You know, 10 eight, eight, eight. Eight. Or 5 on the ground. No, we 8 on the ground is what we're talking well, yeah. about. But they're talking, yeah, under the canopy, I think we're doing it. It's got to be a little higher under the canopy. 5 on the ground. 5 on the ground is what it can be everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's what we're saying. So we went to 8 on the ground? I don't know. That's the question. Well, Even the ground under the canopy is like task level or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think what George yeah. said, uh, the, uh, at the stop and shop side, there were the two bays, one, the other one, that was eight at the ground. Right. And that seemed fine. I mean, that, so that was the brightest one. Uh, the, new, no, the new one? No, there was a brighter one that was the one next to the inner one. It was the outer one. And the same thing with the, across the street at the house. The outer so, one was eight, the inner one was 14, but there were, the outer one was one row of lights. The inner one with two rows of lights because you yeah. had two pump yeah. stations. And that was 14. And these numbers you quoted are at task level or? Think, no, ground level. So I think we should just say let's talk ground level. Uh, talk ground level that. with the knowledge that it's seen consistently <laughs> six to eight more at a hip or a task level. So we're talking 14 to ground, it's 20. And, and it's interesting. One, we understand that a lot of people push for these higher lights for safety, but also just to market their right. product, yeah. whatever, the retail. And yeah. we could see standing across the street at Stop and Shop, Hess seemed to be really bright, this kind of oasis out there. And when we got over there and took a reading, it really wasn't as bright as but the, I had Well, the thought. thing was, that where it really was bright was right next to the building. Right. It was right. like 16 or 18. Right. Yeah. So that's what, and you can see the white building, and that's what is that's so what dramatic. They're trying to so if you go to Bolduc's place, then that's the whole place is lit up like that. So the only, <laughs> so if, if we go ahead with a recommendation of allowing them eight at the ground, um, that's a, a precedent we're setting for any other gas station or retail store that comes into town, <coughs> I guess, right? Well, I think um, the value of the, although I wasn't there, was that we now have an understanding of Different light levels. Right. Look like so. <coughs> what bothered me about their NH whatever standards is it seemed like it was a volunteer group, so that's why they haven't updated their website. It seemed like they were an advocacy group for yeah. for retailers yeah. rather than a, a stand, you know, like a professional standard. Group. Right. Yeah, sort of like the Mass Restaurant Association. Yeah, they're obviously going to create standards that are the best interest. So. I think we, tr I think we try and get as close to our standards as possible. But, but I'll defer to you guys what what that actually is. Now the other thing though, is, and this came up, I can't remember if this was the same meeting. Was this whole idea of there's going to be a measurement done to make sure it's in compliance, and then there's this degradation over time. So these, you know, when they do the initial installation, the lead level is going to be 20 percent above what they will be. Six months from now, the whole you know insects getting the covers, the bulbs kind of degrade. But they didn't know if that would happen with the LED lights. And that was, it was just such an odd. It was the first time I ever was probably it. right, but that's a that's a maintenance thing. Yeah. So I think yep. you go by what the new light that's is. Well, so we're saying the day he opens, yep. eight on the yeah. ground. And if he maintains it, he'll keep it. If he yeah. doesn't, it'll get. All they have to do is buy used light bulbs, and they're <laughs> <laughs> they're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> the restore. They're not a sprinkler. And this is just yeah, under the canopies, not... Yeah, we're just talking about under the canopy. Outside the canopy, um, they've got... Well, there's one level that's 5.2, for some reason. 5.1, 5.2, 4.2. .2. There was that one hot spot off off really quickly. Line, though. Remember, there was, there's the, the spot on <coughs> there. Their land, it looks like it ex extends, but it actually hits the corner of the state land, and there's one hot spot where it doesn't go down to zero. 
No, I'm not talking about zero. I'm just talking about right outside the canopy. Thank you, John. 5.2. Um, so so their plan shows under the canopy what, 15, 20, did you say? No, uh, 13.0 is the highest. 13.3 is the highest one I see. Uh, but it, it doesn't go below. There's only one that goes down to 9.2, but most of them are 12, 13, 11, 12, 13. So are we going to establish a standard for under these gas station canopies and then a standard for general site lighting? And general site lighting should agree with the, the ordinance. The five. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, it could be that we really have to modify the, zone, the uh, lighting ordinance, it would seem to me. Can we do that or we need city council? Well, city council. Well, city council. Yeah. We can we originate something. We modified by saying that there was a, a different standard for gas station canopies. Is that what's that what that, Well, we make it as narrow as possible, I think. But that would be second to this. Yeah, I'm just thinking yeah. it would make sense to figure this out and apply the yeah, standard sure everywhere. Right. But it would also be important for us in our motion to state that, that we're, we're exceeding the ordinance because of the safety factor of the gas station canopy, I think. So that somebody else doesn't come in, just anyone, and say, well, no, I want to go up to eight foot canopies also. Why don't we say that we're exceeding it because we've done field investigation that would justify the, the, the change. Otherwise, it's, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who's, yeah, who's <laughs> decision on it? So you guys feel, what is the light light when you feel comfortable with eight, six, five? I think it was eight. We were kind of well. Yeah, I mean, six was six was fine on the, the dimmer part of the stop and shop, right? Yeah. And right. and okay. uh, for under canopy, and S brighter. S was under under the canopy was six. And once and one on the outside, they were six on the canopy. On the inside, they were in, in the teens. Just because well, there were two rows they were of lights. How much? Two rows of lights. Yeah. How much? They were in the teens. It was like fourteen. Yeah. Teens of oh, teens. Yeah, the teens. Yeah. There was the other page. The thing about you know the way that the uh, S station is set up is you know it's, there's one out of bay in each end, but then there's doubles. There's well, they're all, I mean it's all going to happen. It's what the level is on the ground, right? But that, but the level on the ground in those middle bays was higher than the yeah, outer. Yeah, I, I got you. Well, does that mean that we? That was my other concern because the way this is designed is it's most of the it's two rows a lot of overlap in the middle of it. They have to figure that out. How to so, yeah, I mean, these are a lot more <coughs> uniform than the experience that we had going out right. testing. And that might be just the, the function of the fact that you know, some they lights. can put more of the other. You know, it might be that when they install that, there's not that uniformity, too. I mean, that's... You think? Right. <laughs> so I'm comfortable saying, you know, give them eight. You know, yeah, eight on the ground. Eight, two. 13, 14, and yeah, yeah. which is... Funny. They're going to make a safety argument just based on what we saw the other night, and there's no issue. That was a moonlight night, or was that an overcast night? Well, uh, yeah. 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 so, so we're going to make language that um, <coughs> the staff is recommending that prior to a certificate of occupancy, the property owner should provide an engineer certification. Yep. Okay. Do you want to try that motion, Captain? I move that we allow um, the, uh, lighting under the canopy of eight foot candles. And maximum. maximum of eight foot candles. Provided that prior to a certificate of occupancy, the property owner provide an engineer certificate <coughs> certification that Lighting levels comply with these standards. <clears throat> Do we need to put in the in the motion that outside the canopy? Yes, we'll put it all in there. Okay. Okay. That, that we ex we um, allow the proposed revised plan show LCD lighting under the canopy of eight foot candles and below, outside of the canopy on a property of five foot candles and below, and at the property boundary or in one area of the effective edge of the right of way at 0 0.5 foot candles and below Maybe. with the additional provision. Plus, just saying that this is based on our... Based on field studies, field exploration. So what was the date that you went out to the uh, 
Marshfield? Oh, it wasn't last Monday because it rained. It was Thursday. We could go Thursday. Today's the 26th, so it must have been the 19th. Mm -hmm. I agree. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Part of the discussion. The motion, we're talking about lighting on the East Hampton Road. And based on our field trip, we think that level of six was perfectly usable on the ground and we're proposing that they be allowed to go up to eight under the canopy. Do you guys ever figure out what the proper where we're supposed to measure light? Well we're assuming it's on the ground. Which means it's mm -hmm. a lot brighter up above but, but, but it's about eight that's what one over R squared mm -hmm. does. But no There's we've never seen in black and white that Light that reading should be taken with the instrument flat on the ground or the instrument held at hip level. We haven't found that in the right. So you're saying eight at the ground? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So much higher. Canfield, that's what, that's what we plan. Yeah, I think reading. that is right. Yeah. I mean, it has to. We get a lot of these lighting plans in the office. Okay. Can we get someone who's ninth from oh. <laughs> <laughs> Better wear sunglasses. So that's, uh, okay, any other discussion? All in favor? I guess everybody voted. Good yeah. 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 Hey. Finally, we understand what light looks like. Get that word. Okay, uh, now we go back to item four, which is a proposed amendment to the planning board by seven, seven, eight foot candles right there. I feel so safe in here. So, what's the lighting of, at the bar and the brewery? <laughs> 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 Perfectly safe. Yeah. 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 I still have the red leaves. I found one um, little change that hadn't been made. Go ahead. At 2F, or 2, uh, yeah, F, new F. Where are we? What are we talking about? Uh, in these amendments. The Which section? Uh, section 3.8, mm -hmm. conduct of public mm -hmm. hearings. 3.8 what? Uh, 2F. There was another, it's just a typo, there was another reference there to opponents, so we want to get rid of the, the word opponents. I think we got rid of it in the earlier F. I, I still don't know where we are. This is, this is what the paycheck's like. The 2F is all crossed out. Yeah. Why are we now, worrying about it if it's all crossed out? What is now the new F? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. And the bottom line, the yep. word opponents, yep. right. and let's just take that out. Because yeah. I think we talked about that. Yeah. Does that's going to be changed to the public or something like that? Let's cross right. the last three words out. Any issues? Right. Questions? Right. right. Spirit. Yeah. Last three words. Okay. Thank you, Wayne, for bringing us up into the 20th century. 
I think we're up like 2002. <laughs> okay, minutes. <coughs> Instead of saying everybody, did anybody have a chance to read these? Okay. I thought they were riddled with typos. Oh, riddled with typos. I think we ought to get them. They should be proofread before we get them. One's Carolyn. That's what I think. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't have to. I want to know is uh, my minutes or John's minutes or Michael's or Michael's or Kevin's minutes? Because mine are trading network. Well, yours are the ones that don't follow the usual format? Right. Yeah, it's usually. <laughs> <laughs> July 8th, we're back. July 8th? Where's that t shirt say? Uh, Bad Spellers of America on Tide. This looks like what's this best. Well, did you find out all those titles? It's just one thing. I don't know. I don't know if I got through every single one. The one on page two of the April seventeenth. That's me. Halfway down, Jeb Jacobs said that Amherst has to clean foot the tunnels. Yeah, I noticed that one. We'll change foot to out. Yeah, maybe maybe Wayne really meant that. But we're gonna have to can clean. When you put the time with it, you know, I didn't actually read every word of every single one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, pretty I accurate records of our discussions. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't have my red pen with it when I read it before. So. Okay, you want to uh, make a motion to that effect, George? I'll make a, a motion to approve the minutes of April 17th, May 8th. May 22nd, and also the minutes of May 22nd, June 12th. June 12th. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Eight. Okay. Unit in the minutes. You know, 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 you there's a thing about Village Hill notice of project change um, suggesting a joint meeting with the Village Hill CAC. Um, is there any follow-up to that? Or what page are you on? The last page of the of the last seven minutes. I said you know Terry's suggesting a picture of that. Oh, there's a picture. The changes. All right. The um, we could discuss that briefly. The um, the chairman of the CAC also happens to be the mayor. Said that the decision that the CAC made was completely within the purview. Of that's all she said. Um, we're talking about the master plan change yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Is there going to be a time when that comes to the plan? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it still has to meet. This project still has to meet all the design. Mm -hmm. guidelines and so on that we set forth. The question I had at the last meeting was that we, my understanding, and I may be wrong, with that was we gave a special permit based on the master plan mm -hmm. that we had before, and now that they're changing it, so I don't know if that triggers them having to come in for either a new or a amending special permit, because I don't know whether erroneously, or what's the word, wrongly we were focusing ahead of them, Master plan when we made those decisions to look, look and feel in the village and stuff like that. So, so much I don't pull the old permit to see exactly what Because you're saying they would have to come in as an amendment to the plan? plan? I know what the procedure is, but certainly mm -hmm. if we fall hard to the sense kind of mm -hmm. set, you know, so the structures mm -hmm. on the, the road to story and stuff like that, it seems uh, substantially yeah. different. And okay. So I, I don't know what, what the legal procedure is. But, but the, the question really is, is the, is the dropping the road change it? So, because the buildings themselves are have to come in for you to look at. And I mean, th there's two things. One is the special permit leadership, the questions that need to come to that. The second is the design guidelines which you approved. And you know, the, the, what the zoning says is they have two choices how to do the zoning. 
either they have you approved building by building design, or they have you approved design. They have improved design guidelines. So a building coming in would be one of two ways. Either I guess three ways. One is they have to meet the existing design standards. Two is they could come back to you to amend the existing design standards to agree. Or three is they could come case by case for building, and you'd have to agree to them. So the well, I guess my question is, what was in the special permit conditions? Was it did it explicitly mention the master plan? Yeah, and that's part of the work. Yeah. Sure the and the other interesting thing is, Wayne, we've never had an opportunity to look at the change, so I don't, I can't answer whether the dropping what road or right, the I was going to say maybe path we. Could we get a, like an overview of what the change was to the master plan? All I've seen is a picture but in the advocate and a picture in the gazette. But I want to do yeah. that in a public hearing setting, yeah. you know? I want somebody there to talk. I don't just want to come to me in the mail and I have to decipher it. I need someone to explain it to me. I think the change in the bike path is a very radical change. But it clearly has to go back. There's two things. <coughs> There's a lot of components which definitely have to come back to. The questions Keith raising is a different one and the answer is, does the fact that the master plan itself changed mean for that alone they have to come back to you? And that I don't know the answer. The second thing is, do they have to come back to you for specific things? If they change the design guidelines, absolutely yes. If they change the bike path, then they'll come back to you. I'm just not sure if just the plan itself changing mm -hmm. comes back to you or the details that what it means. And they they file in the back of the file, they said they filed this, um, for some parts of the mostly timing sequences, um, but it relates. And they're asking for there's a portion of the top of for a year which does make sense, which is um, originally Mastodon was responsible for doing the bike path along I'm sorry, the uh, the realignment of Earl Street, um, unless they could find other money to do it. And it's now being done by Mass Highway, uh, with Mass Development being responsible for any overrides for that. Wow. So they want their um, uh, the sidewalks that connect to it to wait until that project's done, because right, basically Mass Highway owns the road during that process. So sorry, wait, the real line of the Royal Street is to start the, the end of the road away from 66, or from 66 all the way down to Route 10. Oh, the whole stretch is currently under construction, right? The complicated is actually two separate contracts. The project we have for a bike path goes from Roundhouse parking lot up to the intersection of Earl and Grove and rebuilds Earl and Grove. That's one project. It's under construction now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's a separate project, which is Route 10 and Earl Street, including the signal there, all the way up to Route 66, that's skipping the intersection of Earl Street. So there'll be a new signal on Route 10 where Earl Street we have been using number 10, and that there, I believe, are already conduits underneath Route 66. So whenever it meets the warrants, it can never signal. Isn't that the part of Route 10 where you can go 55? Yes. Mm -hmm. Not any longer, it signals up. Only go 50. This feeling really drops to the south of it. But, yeah, the people don't slow down, but at this gas station, the proposed gas station. <laughs> speed limit is 35. Is it 35? Just so you know, we did push hard for a right away at that intersection. It was just, it was twice the cost and it was hard to justify. And the problem with that intersection is people coming off of Earl Street can't turn left when the traffic is heavy on Route 10. That's the. They will be once the lights are though. That's why the light okay. is. Yeah. Well, I guess, I mean, I, I, sorry, Blaine, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but okay. I guess for. One, two, three, I'm not sure for Catherine, and maybe even Jen, a lot of us weren't around when you guys did the special permit and the, a lot of the stuff that happened up at Hospital Hill. So in some ways I feel like I'm trying to catch up to what's either been agreed upon by you guys or you know a past version of this board and what's still open to discussion and what um, options we have. I mean, we were just talking about the signs, the, the entryway sign. And I think the people who came here expected a five-minute discussion and a, a, a seal of approval. You weren't here, but that didn't happen. We and, continued uh, it. We continued it. Um, and I think in some ways because Hospital Hill, and this is what something, you know, we talked on the phone a couple weeks ago about a master plan. Maybe I get a copy of it. Because we do have design. It's design guidelines. Design, well, no, but we have, but we can approve something because we don't like the design of it on Hospital Hill. Isn't that correct? Um, no, sort of. It, if they of, yeah. choose not to follow design guidelines, 
that, that comes back to two choices how to do design. It's sort of like central business. There's a cookbook, if they meet the design guidelines, you're limited to, set, to finding what they mean in the design guidelines. If they don't meet the design guidelines, then anything goes. Well, for example, now this modification to the master plan, which shows 120,000 or 130,000 square foot building in the massive parking lot, is that now a design guideline because the master plan has been changed? No. Or is it not? We still can have a discussion as to what that parking lot, what that building looks like when they come to us. We should pull the design guidelines and look at what was specific. Because so when they when you change the master plan, it's not changing the design guidelines. They're not the same thing. Correct. Yeah. The design guidelines are specific document approved by you. That never Just went for before the CAC, though. correct. Thank so you. in terms of that line what you do in the CAC, they do that bigger picture master plan, you do the lower down design guidelines. Right. Sorry. Well, I was just going to, I think, possibly over the next couple, two or three months, if we have a light meeting, it might be worthwhile to put an agenda just to refresh our, on all those aspects, you know, for those who haven't been on the board, yeah. a quick history of the permutations, and then for the rest of us, just an overview of what we've already permitted, what's going to be our purview, because these things are going to be coming online probably in the fall, right? To, well, this, this first minor change may be coming in the next year. No, but like the big stuff yeah, big may stuff. be coming in the fall. Or so. is this is asking for a change in the timing. Oh, but, but clearly, yeah. but, but the timing originally, they started talking about this a year ago. I don't know why they didn't come before. Mm -hmm. The timing originally had to do with this state project going on. Mm -hmm. But clearly, this relates to that because they're asking to put off the timing for the bike path because they want to know. And that, and that being clear about it, they don't know what the outcome. You know, we don't know for sure what the options are. That master plan is sort of conceptual. We don't know can they go through the Cole Morgan parking lot, can they go around the right side, can they go around the left side. Mm -hmm. So those things will have to be, so they, they don't want to come before you until they know which is the options. The other thing is they're currently revising the NEPA permit. There's, there's right. something. That's in George brought up the off Yeah, so I know, so is it worth, remember last time you put in some, we talked about this last time where we, we made comment that we reserve the right. Right. So, so I brought that up the last time. George brought that up. I brought that as a possible action for you all to do. No one did anything for why the June 12th meeting it says the board took no action. So staff wrote comments not on your behalf, sort of on staff comments that basically just say, you know, not making comments in the plan, um, but know that all the details that are coming from the planning board yeah, are and not making comments. Is in no way implying the planning board planning staff. So you've approved. essentially done that. Right. And, and this is frankly, it has no legal effect because NEPA doesn't care. Yeah. It has a, you know, an effect on that development. We're not making this bigger draft. When you're talking about the notice of project change. That's correct. Oh. Thank well, you for doing that for us. Is our July 26th meeting, and we've continued to sign from today to the 26th. I'm not sure what else, but can we have Terry or who would be the person, would it be you, Wayne? Who would come in and try to um, pull its background? What, yeah. what, 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 what it, it the latest current events so are? Here's the it could be me, it could be Terry. Um, 26 is a good meeting because the other one is probably going to be before you. It's a bad meeting because I'm not going to be here. So if you're okay doing with Carol and Terry, or assuming Terry Terry's around, I think it would be a great meeting to have a discussion. Because I, I think if one of their applications, so I think it's a relatively light meeting. But we continue to sign. Is that a Thursday? 24. Okay. 24. Okay, so it's a good, if you don't need me there, then I think it'd be a great meeting because you have a light agenda. I can't, I mean, you guys, George, Brady, Keith, I mean, do we need Wayne? Do we need Terry? Mm -hmm. I think we need Carolyn, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's that would be my preference. Well, Carolyn's not taking off any more second quarter Thursdays. So yeah, I think we want <laughs> Carolyn, <laughs> Carolyn or Wayne. Carolyn has to work to do Carolyn, if you guys are good, Carolyn, you know, yeah, yeah, this, this stuff's going to start yeah. coming up sooner rather than later. Well, Bruce, you uh, have no uh, idea what's going on, so. And we've got Ken, and it's been here since the get go, so. Since the beginning of time. Right, that's why, you know, I kind of felt, yeah. you know, in some ways when the sign, yeah. maybe I, I was wrong that we didn't have as much control over the design of the Thank sign you. as we did, if we do. Some of us are probably up the design guy, guidelines already, but maybe I don't know if you mean. And can you make copies of the, all the permits, or at least the, the ones that are significant? Like you probably uh, need yeah. the subdivision ones, possibly the, the special permit. Yeah, the just take a few months to track them. Uh, this yeah. this could be an undergraduate course or a graduate course. Well, the thing is that we're going to get we're going to have people come as soon as the Cole Morgan thing starts. 
we're going to have a packed house, and I'd rather us look like we all are familiar with yeah, all the rules and regulations yeah, yeah. in front of a group of 100 people. Yeah. Well, that's the unfortunate fallout of the uh, PAC meeting and decision, is now that um, we'll be the ones faced with all those questions, I think, um, from the... Well, that's well, but it theoretically, was, was the CAC's job too? No, I, yes. no I, I'm just saying that, unfortunately for us, that's typically the yep. position we get through it is that, as a permanent body, we, this is where things, yeah, people start seeing what's going on. Right, and if it's anything like last summer with the hotel, it's, it's, you know, there were, when we were mm. a lot of people with some very strong ideas, and I imagine there's going to be, you know, we had people here yeah. for the sign, a couple of people who felt very strongly about sign. So I imagine a 130,000 square foot building and a 450 car parking lot is going to equate to some equally passionate, but it's probably a great number of parking So can you give a 60 second tour of permits that they got just so when you get all your package before the next meeting, it makes sense? So in essence, there were four votes, and they may have been combined votes, I don't remember that case, but there were four, in essence, permit approvals which you gave for the project. Um, three of which you have ability to govern if they don't come back, one you don't. So let me just go through them all. The, the first, and again, no particular order, they got a subdivision permit. Subdivision member is when you build a new road, you need approval. If they choose, and I won't include the package, but if they choose not to build a road to the South Campus, they don't need to come back to you. Because if you have a permit, you get the choice not to use the permit. Just to clarify, when you talk about a permit, Every permit cur covers both the south and the north campus. They got some, see that's the point. That's where it gets tricky. Right, yeah. I, I have to look at it. The special permit definitely covers the entire campus. The subdivision, I don't remember if they got, I think they got separate phases, but I'm not sure about that. I think, I think we did separate. I think we did separate. So I think that's right. Did the special permit get amended so it's a That's what you'd have to do to come back to you, right? So, so the subdivision permit, the first one, they can just walk away from it. You know, there's no other, you know, obviously this happens all the time. You approve projects and the market goes south and someone doesn't build it. So if, if there's conditions in the subdivision permit you like, tough, because they may just disappear and don't do it. The second permit is the special permit. That was definitely issued for the entire campus. That was the one that's around the, the master plan, but I don't know if it was the master plan was illustrative, in which case it's the details that matter or if you're actually including the master plan. I, I think it was a luster, right? I think it was details, but I'm not sure. So that, that's one permit. If they have to amend it, they clearly have to come back before you. The third permit was the site plan. The site plan was funny because what they did is they got a site plan for the entire campus, sort of the master planning level, and that would clearly have to come back before you because that's changing. So the idea was as master developers, they're getting a site plan permit, and then they wanted, they assumed that every individual parcel developer would come before you for approval of their parcel. So we always knew as a parcel came before you, that developer would have to come before you for a site plan for that. Um, mass development thought they were done for the overall campus site plan, clearly that's changed. So subdivision doesn't have to come before you, special permit I need to research, um, you can read it when you get the package. The overall site plan absolutely has to come before you because they're making changes for that. So the bike paths, for example. The bike path is a permit condition of both the site plan and the subdivision. Subdivision goes away, but it remains inside. And maybe special permit as well. There um, was a site plan review? Overall. So, so not, the, <coughs> not the lots, right? Because the idea with mass develop, yeah. development is the master planner. So they wanted to know where the water would go, where the sewer would go, where the bike path would go. Mm -hmm. And then they were leaving it to the end users to deal with the details. Mm -hmm. I've got a few right here where both Clark came forward, but that was mm -hmm. a more recent one that they got a site plan the entire campus. Mm -hmm. and that's the building under construction on Earl Street. And then as a condition of the special permit, they need you to approve the design standards. And so you approve the design standards. And again, they stay in effect. If they can live with the design standards, they're all set. If they want to change the design standards, they have to come back. So Cole Morgan knows, for example, that the facade they're building along the street would have to be masonry, would have to be two stories, all is issues which are in the design standards. But there may be other things which they have to come back to. And that's kind of leverage that we have in this process? Do we have any leverage or is it just... Well, yeah, certainly in terms of design of the building, mm -hmm. you, have, you have total leverage back there. Well, you know, design of the building that faces the street. Right. Um, well, 
depends whether the leverage means we can reject it or not, or if we can modify it. Yeah, modify design. Yeah. Is that, is that similar to the sign that was here in front of the board tonight where the leverage was you could, well, you could deny it, or you could say if you come back with a different design, we'll approve it. I mean, yeah, it's not a little different. The signs are content neutral, so you can't adjust the sign. You can say it's too many signs around to approve it, but you can't put that sign. I do have to tell you that if they come back with a sign you like and then you approve it and the day later they go to the building inspector and want to swap it out, it doesn't require any permits. They can do that by right. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know. What it's like you whatever you want, but they can change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that? Unless you put a condition in there that has to be that same. Is that anything that we can't do content signs? Yeah. Other than something that traffic safety, you know, a flashing red or flashing yellow or flashing green, but um, I'm not sure you can have you can, you know, okay. recommendations. We just have a lot of recommendations. Right. Right. So Even if it's a special permit, you can't. Okay. Signs are pretty tricky because it's, it's First Amendment issues. So you're mm -hmm. much less limited on signs than you are in almost any. Right. Do you want to get in there, Bruce? Um, I, just, I wasn't sure where to go with it when we were sitting here. So, just back to Catherine's original question about the June twelfth meeting and the talk about getting together with the CAC and the planning board. We've tried that a couple of times. Um, I don't know if it was helpful. It's such a large group. It's 15 of them and 10 of us, and uh, I don't think it is. I don't think we need to meet with them. I just think no. we need to get up to speed with what's yep. what we've yeah. done in the past, what our purview is, and what may be coming. Do you don't think you need to meet with them? I don't, I don't think, think so. Okay. It's, um, if some of them want to come and kind of say something during a public hearing of why, how they're feeling, or what they're doing, that's great, but it didn't seem to be a real dialogue and a discussion. Yeah. The thing about the CAC is the kind of committee that sort of drives me crazy because there's 15 people and most of them have very narrow views. One of them represents mm -hmm. mental health, one of them represents housing, and they don't care about the project as a whole. All they care about is their own special okay. thing. It's not particularly great if you want to reach a consensus about stuff. I, I think where the joint meeting is might be helpful is actually in a totally different area because I think it not involve the level of detail that you guys are on. So talking about some of those issues that just, they never, you know, especially where the bike path just should go is never been part of their discussion. They've always left that in here. I, I think the other issue is, you know, the comprehensive plan that's the same in Hampton talks about where development should be occurring. And part of that is talking about, re, you know, if we want to get some number of new units in the sort of dense urban core, it talks about is the same hospital a great opportunity to get those units. That's the really big issue with CACs we are talking about over the next year. And I think that might be more of an area of both want to have more, you know, I mean, what's happening now is the master plan allowed 207 units and they could do 10% over the master plan without having to come back. Um, and in other words, what happened last year, we adopted this 40 yard district because they got exactly the same number of units. They didn't get any new ones, but they got the same units in half the space. Now the top of the hill mm -hmm. is unprogrammed. And it's always, you know, we always knew they'd come back at some point. So CAC began those discussions last meeting or meeting before? I guess last, last meeting in detail, meeting before a little bit, uh, about what should be the right thing. They started with a, a tour of that area, the unprogrammed area, and talked about that. And I think that's, I mean, again, you've had some turnover, but that's the area the planning board's been advising for a long time. There should be more units. Yeah, the, but the 40-yard the district that we created, they don't have to build it to that density. They can no, just, they can just fact, build the, the permitted amount. And they right. can still build up into the north. But right. they don't have to, right. to build at that density. And they're going to build a little bit less than the zoning allows, but enough that there wouldn't be that many units left. Right. So yes, the northern part of the campus, they have some units before they get to 207, but they're not many. I guess my, my immediate concern is that we're up to speed on what our purview is for this project so that we can get it as good as we you know, envision it should be. Being blindsided at the last minute with something being forced down our throats, and that's going to hopefully be good. Yeah. 
Well, that's in a way, I mean, that's almost how it felt. But, you know, we, I thought it would have been nice to at least have been informed by the CAC that there, this was on their agenda. Yeah. That, you know, even if we could have attended their meeting without having a joint meeting, we could have at least gone and, and heard what was being proposed. That would have been, you know, just polite. You know? hmm. Because, of the, you know, a change like this, the, the scope of the change, it's a, it's a pretty big change for, the, for that part of the plan. Um, had to read about it in the paper. It's also a big opportunity, some people would say. It is, and for some people are, are very, probably extremely excited about it. But, um, you know, when I compare the two versions of these things, I'm well, my hand. I, I think I'm not necessarily opposed to call or any right? big industrial type thing up there. I just want it to be done in a way that meets the village concept. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Not why right. people are envisioning for that area, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, they've been talking about that for years, though. Oh, that's that. I mean, the surprise to me was not Cole Morgan wanting to go up there. The surprise to me was the scope of change that happened that the CAC approved without yeah. uh, much ability for the public or us to be you know, aware of it. So, I mean, changes are bad, the surprises are bad. Well, conceptually, they, what CAC said was this was okay as far as they were concerned. It's not okay necessarily as far as the public or the planning board is concerned. But I think the planning, a lot of people the think planning board is going to have a public hearings and there's going to be ample opportunity for public input on the thing. Oh. It was sort of conceptually it's okay with the CAC. I mean, I mean it's a lot of people think it's a home run because you don't have to try and market all these separate little properties. Oh, yeah, and no. frankly I don't think it, 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 it's the preserve this I, I'm a little upset with the loss of the buildings along the street. Right. That's the most disturbing part. The rest of it could all be full of uh, butler buildings. No, I don't want. To, I don't want to confuse my my disappointment with being surprised with with you know my feelings of approval or denial mm -hmm. of this particular project. I was surprised it happened without us knowing about it. That was my my biggest the issue. The process. The process yeah. involved, and then also my. The thing I'm concerned with when this does come to us is that I know what our abilities are to well, yeah, weigh I, in on it. And that's something that I, 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 you guys have been on the board longer with that to deal with this more than yeah, I have. Well, I, I'm, also, I'm also on the CAC, and I, I didn't have much notice, but I have to admit I did not have a Paul Revere moment, maybe I should have, in notifying people. But I didn't. Well, no, I don't think planning, it's, it oh, no, I'm planning not. Again, I'm, I'm not blaming you either. I just think that yeah. the, you know, the, if if the CAC, you know, this entity is going to make, you know, you're just a member of it, you're not even yeah. chair, you know. But but there should have been some. I don't know, just some yeah. notice. And what we talked about too was that just conceptually, was this proposed plan was so drastically different from what was envision for that shouldn't somebody give these developers a heads up so they don't flush this whole design out out and try to force it down our throat having not ever been able to see it you know and raise those concerns to anybody in the first place we talked about that for, I mean I think that was your concern Are they that we never heard we, we found this this is great Cole Morgan's coming everyone's excited but look at this plan, and the first time we saw this plan was in the paper, and we compared it to this plan, it's so different, but we've never got a chance to. Yeah, but that, that original plan, except for the road, is all conceptual. It's well, I know, but that, I think the road is the big thing, is that instead of buildings on the road, you've got parking. Well, the loss of the road means one one thing that somebody suggested at the CAC meeting is whether the parking lot would be pervious or otherwise you could walk through there and stuff like that. And my feeling is it's going to be like an armed camp up there. And I think it would right. be really yeah. desirable for them to design it so that they didn't feel that the parking lot had to be secure. It right. could be a little bit more of a village <coughs> walking place. Well, does Cole Morgan consider the CAC the approval they need? Or does oh, Cole yeah. Morgan? No. Yeah. 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 I just think we need to understand more design yeah. standards yeah. are. Yeah, and right. a lot of what, I, for me, the issue is I just don't know. And that's, um, so I'm, if, if Carolyn and Terry can help us work through some of this stuff, and, you know, 
know, that, that would probably answer a lot of the questions, but no. I don't know what Paul Morgan's thinking. Well, one other thing, the CIC recognized the relocation of Paul Morgan to Village Hill to be a major change, which requires mass development to file an amendment to the master plan. The CIC decided that. Then they decided that they approved the amendment. So it was a two-step process. It could have been they said it didn't, wasn't really a major change. Mm -hmm. But they did say it was, and they presented it. And, uh, it was not a public hearing. I mean, public was, it was a publicly advertised meeting. Um, but uh, the whole process of all the, the new approvals and stuff like that does have to come to us. Are those what? the minutes from, from that meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just it's, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure if you're the one who said it, but now I feel like the public, when they were there, you know, get mad at us because we do things you know, without telling well, them. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, in a sense, that's what I feel like. I was almost like, hold on a second. What's going on? I don't know. It's like this guy who was a surgeon, you know, who's a neighbor of that guy. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So. A legitimate public complaint. So do oh, we have a right. whole lot more meeting to go here, guys? Because I'm fading. Another hour. Yeah. Wait, we, we tackled seven on the agenda. The yeah. proposed zoning really changes. We, no. we tackled it, but the runner was very elusive and kind of slipped through our grasp. <laughs> We're not sure about the color coding. Well, for your emails, you like you guys like it. Well, we will. I like the idea of the flashing, like the sign, the flashing red and flashing green. The concern flashing was the yellow. yellow. If you went to print it in black yeah, and white, the yellow. Blue. Um, you wouldn't see it in the text. We go on. Okay. Wayne, I've got this, this email from the Northampton Doctor Club about the traffic uh -huh. studies and stuff they did, and I'd like to give that to each member. Okay. At some point, I, I want to schedule there's two sheets for each each body here. Can you read it and discuss it? So I, I think we'll discuss it at the next meeting, but we should we should be able to. No. I want to be able to hear the soccer club defend themselves. I might have to uh, recuse myself. My kid just made the team. So I don't think it's exactly. Do you want them to? I'm going to need at least a month to read this. You've got it. The building the commissioner, he didn't take any action on the complaint? Or? I, don't I don't know where we are in that. So yeah, what, what are we getting this for? I'm confused. We're, we're Read it. And then we're going This is the, re well, we're, I want to schedule a chance for the soccer club to, to present their case. They, before when we discussed it, we, they weren't here. But unless you take any action, what's the point of having them? Pardon? But there's no access before you go. Well, so they're supposed to. Well, okay. So we we present. They presented this report. This is it. You read it. That's it. Okay. Well, next item. Well, I'm not going to gonna read it. I got to save it till. So so I've got to hear it. it. Well, I guess I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying it may make sense to read it and then figure out if any action is necessary. Because and there's no permit before you. There's no request for building inspector before you. So. If reading you can send it home, then there certainly was, there, there, was, the there was a request for the building inspector and I got the impression that we came down on the soccer club like a ton of bricks and they didn't have any you know, they didn't know about the hearing that they, they were you know, they were in the same position that right. a lot of people are. And they, at an, least they should have the day in court, so to speak. They've got an accomplishment listed which couldn't have happened. This is supposed to happen July 2008. These are things they plan to do. I haven't read it yet. I just got it today. Uh, hey, you want to join our planning board? On a regular basis? Do you find kinds come a little bit more direct? Than, uh, I find the uh, Community Preservation Committee to be more direct. <laughs> You're kidding. Man, well, in the special permit, I think I asked you, Wayne, but there was no language that said that they had to present. They just, I right, physically presented, they had to just give my report. 
Right, so they asked to come, and based on the conversation you all had, I said, give us a written report to find where we're going to adjust it, and you guys figure out if you want to come. Do, do the board members feel it would be wise to put this on the agenda and have a discussion and invite all the parties, the building inspector and the soccer club, and at this point in time, and the neighbors? No. No. Uh, no. no. The, the one thing that I think was important was that this is Northampton Soccer Club, not Western United, who's the co-owners of this permit. Right. So that's that's, that's your problem, right? That yeah. The property owner said to them, you have to get married to get a permit. We're not going to let you do it separately. And so I think Northampton Soccer Club's doing a good job, West United, not so much. And the soccer club wants to get credit for doing a good job. But the problem is, it's not too, you know, if there were two permits, that would be easy to do. Yeah. There's one permit, they're jointly and separately responsible for the outcome. Right, so I mean, if we had North Haven Soccer Club, we would need Western United in here, and right. I'd want to see something come out as well. Right. It seems like they're the ones who are dropping the ball. That's right. I, I think until the building commissioner either requests a hearing or makes a finding on the special permit, I don't think there's any way for us to get embroiled in. You don't think there's any PR value to having them feel heard? Since they were dumped on, the, the, the problem is that nothing happened. Yeah. Well, I think we had. I think we had to take it home. We read it. We sleep on it. We read it. It also depends on what the neighbors do down there. If they complain more to the building inspector, then he may come back to us for guidance. We're going to have to. It should be quiet this summer. But I'm just saying, why don't we just wait until there's something for us to act on before we? Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, that's sort of what I suggest. They show up and then the residents go, well, we want to be heard, and then next week we have the residents come in and then. No, I, mean, I think we'd have to probably. But you know what I mean. I'm just saying we yeah. Well, at least we have the report now. We can we have enough trouble with permits to remain the planning. Okay. Then for so we'll kind of we don't table it in depth. Yeah. Yeah. I want it. I mean, it's I should talk, but I want everybody to read it. Oh. Try to figure it out. Yeah, and we should also put more pressure on the city yeah, council to have some fields and some fairgrounds on the waste space. Yeah, waste space down in the fairgrounds. Oh, I haven't saw it. Saw it. What's this scoop of your traffic mitigation of 10 first time you think is that? Oh, yeah. the last transition. I have yeah. somebody moved it. I moved move it. it. We adjourn in a second. Okay. Are the, all in favor? Early. <laughs> I guess that might be the public process. <laughs> move, the motion to adjourn to takes over. Oh, Jeffrey's like every time. I think it's a debatable. Let's debate it. The will of the majority is a subcommittee. Yeah. Yes, I need an ad hoc subcommittee. Certainly, sure. I'd say we go check the lightning.